Today we are going to briefly discuss about the current standoff across LAC that is line of actual control between India and China. Before we proceed, one thing very important to understand about LAC is that there is no consensus or uniformity in the perception of alignment of LAC. Our concept of LAC is completely different from what China perceives LAC as. LAC is approximately 4000 km long and it is divided into three segments or three sectors, Eastern, Western and Middle or the Central. For us, more than half of the LAC is disputed, but for China, it's only a small portion of the LAC which is disputed. So the base line is the difference in perception which is leading to so many of the clashes, face-offs or the standoffs that we have been witnessing along the LAC. Now, what has happened this time? This time we have observed three incidences in the month of May. Number one, in early May, there have been some phys exchange of physical blows in clash between Indian and some Chinese troops, some Indian and Chinese troops along the Sikkim border in the Nathula region. Number two, in the month of May only, we have seen that some of the Chinese troops, they have forced their way into the Galwan Valley hot springs, Pangong Lake. And another thing in the month of May, which is very important, is that Nepal has come out with its new map. It, in the new map, it has shown the Kalapani region, which is a part of our Uttarakhand, as its portion. Now, you will ask how it is concerned with China. In this Kalapani region, we have a tri-junction, tri-junction between India, Nepal and China. So all these three important factors or things have happened in the month of May. Now the obvious question is why it has happened? What has been the trigger? This time the trigger is that India has constructed a road a newly constructed road inaugurated by India along the Shayok River to Dalat Beg Oldi. Dalat Beg Oldi is one of the report, one of the remotest as well as one of the most vulnerable portions or the points along the LAC in Ladakh region. China is saying that India has encroached on its side of LAC, whereas India is saying that Chinese troops have encroached on our part of LAC. Now, is it for the first time that we are witnessing uh, such a standoff? No, this is not the first time. Rather, it's a normal thing. Every year we witness many face-offs across LAC. And there have been some uh, major standoffs also we have witnessed in the past. Like in 2013, Depsang was there. Then 2014, we have witnessed Chumar. And then 2017, the famous Doklam standoff was there. So now, why there is so much of hue and cry about the latest standoff? Is it different? We have already witnessed it in the past. Yes, this is different this time because earlier they were quite localized. We had Chumar, we had Repsang, we had Dokla. One point or one point or one place in LAC. But now it is not localized. If you see the pattern, it started from Sikkim, Natula region. And then now it has stretched across the geographies from your Sikkim to Ladakh. Now we have points like Nathula is there, then we have points Pangong is there, Hot Spring is there, Galwan, uh, the whole Galwan Valley is there. So this time the spread is very wider. So it is serious. It is different from the earlier ones. And in the Pangong area, India has been patrolling up to finger eight. Now what is a finger? Finger is a mountain spur on the northern bank of the Pangong Lake. Now, India has been patrolling up to finger 8 and now China is stopping us to patrol up to finger 8. It is trying to change the status quo. And very interesting, another very interesting thing to be noted is that Galwan region and this hot spring area, these have been peaceful areas 
till date we have never find any kind of skirmishes in this area they do not even feature in the list of the 23 contested areas which have been identified by the government through various mechanisms since 1993 so these have been considered as peaceful areas and for the first time they have tried to enter into the new areas so this time it is completely different the geographical stretches quite wide from Sikkim to your Ladakh is there then at the same time in the Pong, Pangong Lake also they are trying to change the status quo as well as here also the new areas which were considered as peaceful they have this time attacked or they have entered into those areas now the question is why are they doing this but why it is doing this we have just constructed a road and if you compare their side of LAC, they have very well developed infrastructure there. Technically also they are much more advanced than us. Economically also they are five times bigger economy than India. Politically also they are P5. They have a bigger political clout. So why are they worried with our infrastructure construction on our side of LAC? See, it is very difficult to read. It is very difficult to uh, get into the mind of the Chinese people because of their opacity. But there are certain points which could be analyzed why China is behaving like this. But before we take up these points one by one, one thing is at the core. That is that we have a competing strategic interest in the region. And that is why we often find that we are clashing, be it your LAC, be it your economy, be it your polity, be it your, uh, your influence in the uh, region, globally, regionally. So we have this, we are fighting for strategic goals. Now, what might be the reason why China is doing this? One thing is of late because of the changing geopolitics in the region as well as growing stature of India internationally, we have started asserting ourselves. We have ample examples to prove it. Like we have changed the status of the state of Jammu and Kashmir. We have reorganized the state and it also has brought a strategic imbalance in South Asia. China is concerned about it because a major highway that is a Karakoram highway passes through this region connecting it with Pakistan and moreover in this region China has hugely invested more than 60 billions in its China Pakistan economic corridor which is a part of its ambitious BRI project that is your belt and road initiative. Now, China has tried to take up this issue at UN also, but it did not garner any support. This whole region of Gilgit, Baltistan, Ladakh, Karakoram Highway, this has a lot of significance to China. And after the Doklam crisis, in the last two years, we have picked up pace in the construction of our border infrastructure, which is very worrisome for China. Our plan is to complete the construction in the entire stretch of the Galwan Valley before the onset of winters this year. We also have to construct a 60 meters bridge across the Galwan River or the Galwan Nala or the rivulet near the point of confluence of the Sheok River. And if we are able to do it, then we will get the easy access to the southern southernmost post of Karakoram Pass. So China wants to stall our all ongoing infrastructure, border infrastructure developments that are happening. And then in the long run also, China has its very ambitious plans. It wants to form a route to Pakistan through the Dalat Beg Oldi region. Also, it wants to connect Tibet with Gilgit Baltistan region. It has a lot of investments in CPEC corridor, which is a very important part of BRI. So it wants that there should be a lot of connectivity, all weather connectivity for the CPEC route. And then it also wants to stall. China also wants to stall 
the extension of our airstrip to the remotest part that is Dollar Big Oldie because if it is constructed we would be able to operate heavy transport aircrafts there so they do not want that and at the same time if they are able to cut us off at Dollar Big Oldie they will be able to choke our supplies to our troops at Siachin which is also a very important point for us then apart from this if we see the row between India and Nepal with respect to Kalapani uh, region where we have a tri-junction there also China has a problem because there is a tri-junction and our ITBP is manning that area since 1962 Indochina war and recently India has constructed a road in Uttarakhand up to the uh, we have constructed a road up to your Nathula portion in the Chinese uh, along the Chinese border which has lot of security implication in your Tibet part of China. So because of all these strategic reasons China is much worried but along with these strategic reasons there might be other reasons also like there cannot there can be another reason for the trigger is like china is also very upset with the recent announcements or the recent regulations which have been put forward by government of india whereby we have banned the chinese companies from acquiring indian firms without government's uh, permission then at the same time some of the uh, analysts are also saying that china is using this as a tactics to divert the attention what attention it is trying to divert it is trying to divert the attention of its own people in its own country because of the growing voices against its failure of handling the COVID crisis in China. So many people have died. Economy has come down. So there now voices are being raised against Xi Jinping. So it is a tactic to, div uh, to divert the attention. And at the same time, internationally also, we have seen that the voices against China for COVID is increasing. So it might be another reason for all these endeavors in this point of time when we are the whole world is facing the problem of COVID. Then another point to be seen is that it's not that China is bothering only India. It is bothering other neighbors also. If we see that China has become now more assertive, more active, more uh, masculine in your South China Sea. At the same time, we have also observed that with respect to Taiwan, with respect to Hong Kong, it is becoming more and more stringent. So what does this show? This shows that post COVID, it is trying to play a more assertive foreign policy. Now, there might be one reason or it might be the mixture of all these reasons that why China is doing so. Now that the standoff is there, the obvious question is how dangerous it could be. See, this is not the first time that we are witnessing this, but this time it is more serious. And this time, if you see, the built up is also largest than before. And it has a lot of security implications because it is happening at some of the most strategic points for India. Say, for example, the standoff at Pangong, it, is, it has direct security implication on Ladakh. Then we have your similarly Sheok Valley region. This has a direct security implication on our Siachen as well as Nubra Valley. So this time it is more dangerous, but it is up to us how far we are going to escalate it. So the question is, are we escalating it or are we, uh, can we expect a war? So if you see 
we cannot expect a war neither of the countries would like to go for a war that too at a time when their economies and otherwise also they are facing a lot of crisis because of covid and we have also seen that when us has given the option of negotiating between the two countries both have rejected to it and both have given almost the similar kind of a statement that we have been doing we have been resolving our issues before also and this time also we are capable enough to resolve our issues bilaterally so again the war is the remotest possibility almost negligible and the present situation is that on both the sides the troops are standing in a eyeball to eyeball position but parallelly negotiations talks are also going on like the uh, uh, brigade level talks are also happening and we also before brigade level talks we also had talks of other officers eight rounds of talks have happened and then both the sides we are not seeing any kind of adverse remarks from the senior government officials or the ministers or the uh, head of the state so it appears that like in the past we have a very good history where we have a credible record of maintaining peace and tranquility again we would be able to do so but yes of course it would not happen all of a sudden standoff may continue for a long time longer than even dokla if we are not able to reach a amicable solution but yes we are trying and we are in the process see one thing we need to understand is like these kind of standoffs they are just a kind of a power play to build a pressure for diplomatic gives and takes and that is what has happened also and now we have so many platforms we have formal we have informal we have we had wohan we had mamalapuram and the spirit says that in these two informal uh, dialogue platforms also we have discussed that we would not let our differences escalate to the level of disputes and this is what we are trying to do this time the same spirit we are trying to follow and that is why we have opened the channels for dialogue and we are quite hopeful that there would be peace and we would be able to settle it amicably and there would be a prevailing peace as we have been doing it for the last so many years